So an interesting question is whether there's any difference between how to do induction and the scientific method. And in my opinion, they're very closely related. So science is to a very large extent about induction. I mean, scientists analyze data and try to explain this data, usually via models which they extract from the data. And um, that's exactly what the induction does. You know, induction infers general models from specific data. So in this sense, science and induction is synonymous. Um, the difference is that if you talk about induction, you usually mean um, or are interested in a formal normative theory while you know science is done in many many ways you know that you have descriptive theory of science how science is done actually then there's normative theory of science um, and this normative theory of science formal induction should play and plays a major role but then there's more to science um, a little bit more so that's about experimentation so you just not always just get the data and try to infer your models, but you can do experiments. Yeah? Even looking around, deciding where to look you know, is an action. Yeah? So um, science also includes this active part. So it goes beyond induction, also to decision making and planning. I mean, you plan some experiments for many, many years in advance. Yeah? And in a sense, then science resembles so a simple science maybe so the inductive side of science resembles Solomonov induction or could be formalized by Solomonov induction while um, science the more experimental part or if you include the experimental parts corresponds then more to IXE because IXE is also a system which learns and plans. So I have talked about um, Occam's razor as a foundation of induction um, and possibly even um, science. Um, of course, you can ask, you know, is it the right principle? Yeah. Is it a good principle? And how can you justify the principle? Um, that's a very difficult question and you know, a very deep philosophical question. My answer to this is the following. Whatever we do, you can always ask why. So let's assume we start with probability axioms. Then you ask, you know, why you choose them? Are these the correct axioms? Then you try to justify them. Yeah, you know, there's for instance Cox justification. He starts with reasonable principles, um, beliefs should satisfy, and then he shows that um, these beliefs must satisfy the standard axioms of probability. But then you can ask why are these um, initial axioms of Cox are reasonable. And then maybe you come up with another principle which justifies them, but you can ask why, 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 why. Yeah? And in order to prove or justify something, you have to start, you make some assumptions. Yeah? And there's an infinite regress. And the only way to solve this, at some point you stop and say, these are the axioms or principles I take. And then I consider what are the consequences. And if these consequences, you know, are good or useful or true or whatever you desire, you know, then you stop questioning them. I mean, you can still ask, you know, are there better axioms? Um, can we reduce the number of axioms and so on? Yeah, but the majority of researchers then would go just on. You know, we have the piano axioms of the natural numbers. We could ask why are these correct, you know, um, but you know, intellectual numbers are so useful, yeah, you, you, you just take them for granted. And so now you look at science itself, yeah, science proceeds according to certain ways, yeah, and certain principles. And you can ask, you know, are these principles good, sound, you know, are these the only principles? And you can ask why, 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 why. And if you do it often enough, yeah, you arrive at Occam's razor principle. And it seems that Occam's razor principle is a necessary and a sufficient principle for science. So in a certain sense, you could say it's defining what science is. And question Occam's razor is in a sense questioning the scientific method.
and well I think not much can be done about it. You know maybe in future we detect a principle which is better than Occam's razor um, in whatever ways you know you replace it by a different principle, you expand its scope or narrow its scope yeah but for the moment Occam's razor is all we have yeah and um, it's the best principle out there so we should just use it until somebody has found something better and leave it to the philosophers yeah to question what comes later. Of course there have been various mostly philosophical arguments put forward why in general AI is not possible or will never um, happen. Um, one of the more interesting ones, uh, it's still wrong, yeah, but one of the more interesting ones is Lucas and Penrose argument, um, is used a girdle incompleteness argument um, that um, there are some theorems which are true um, but cannot be proven, but we as humans can see that they are true yeah, by meta reasoning and that are um, an AI will never be able to do this meta reasoning. And um, I think that is seriously mistaken. Um, it starts already with the wrong premise that a human being is a perfect rational deductive reasoning system. Yeah. And that's wrong, you know, on at least two accounts, yeah. Um, we are not perfect, yeah, and we are also also quite limited in what we can prove. I mean, yes, we have proven Fermat's theory, but P equal NP is still open, yeah, so we are rather limited. So um, and even if we were perfect, it would never make errors, yeah. Maybe sort of the mathematics community is good enough to wipe out any error sort of within reasonable time and they never make errors, yeah, but who knows, yeah. Um, I don't believe that actually. So then, um, in order for this argument to go through, um, we as humans um, would need to be able to recognize the Gödel sentence about ourselves, which is so huge and messy, uh, if it exists at all because we're not formal systems, yeah, um, that we would not be able to, so we also cannot make this jump. Yeah. Um, so I think that invalidates. I mean, there have been several papers about there. Um, 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 this counter argument. It's still interesting because it's a formal argument, yeah, um, and you can, you know, formally argue about it. It is quantitative enough, yeah. Um, so, in this sense, it is interesting but wrong, in my belief. I mean, there are many interesting philosophical questions around AI. Um, one is Free will, for instance. Do humans have free will? Yeah. Can a robot have free will? Um, so these are two questions, and each question could be answered yes or no. This is four possible answers. Yeah, I can sort of narrow down the space of answers to two easily. Yeah, if you believe a human has free will, also an intelligent machine has free will. I believe. Yeah, and if you believe a human does not have free will, then a machine will also have not free will. Yeah. Okay, so it boils it down to one question, does there exist free will or not? Yeah. And um, that's an interesting philosophical question. And I think the answer is yes and no, it depends on how you view it. Um, I believe that the universe is governed by um, stochastic computable laws yeah, and that the human brain is no exception, so we are governed by these laws. Yeah, and in this sense there is no free will. But, on the other hand, we are not able, as humans, and the same would apply then for intelligent machines, predict ourselves in advance what we do. Yeah? So it appears to us and to others that we have free will. Okay, if you want to go into the philosophy, you can construct now these kinds of scenarios which seem to lead to paradoxes. For instance, I build a machine which predicts my brain in um, twice as fast, yeah? So I can predict what I will do, say it predicts I will raise my right arm, yeah? but then hmm, then I know this prediction and I will not obey, I will raise my left arm, because why should I obey this? So I have, either the prediction is wrong, yeah, um, 
um, or something else happened, but in any case, sort of, it was not a perfect predictor, so um, contradicting um, uh, the assumption that there exists such a predictor, that, the, that there's no free will, or that the universe is computable. But you can easily show that this argument is not, not, not sound. So, um, physics tells us that in a closed system, you can predict things, okay? And if I take a closed system, put a human in a box, yeah, have my predictor outside, it predicts what I will do, writes it on some paper, then I do my action, and then afterwards I look what this predictor has predicted, it will be always, I mean, if it's a perfect predictor, it will always be correct, and I believe these perfect predictors exist. And maybe that's annoying to you that there's something else out there which can predict every step, yeah, but that's not a problem. But if you let this other system tell you what you do, it's not a closed system anymore. So you have changed the setup. Yeah? So what you should now do, you should predict what happens if you put the predictor and yourself in the box. Yeah? And then you can repeat the argument. So, so this argument that if somebody tells me what I will do and then I don't obey, that this argument shows that there must be something like free will is not sound. And I've written about that in my book, briefly.